It was a traditional old-fashioned Thanksgiving here in South County where marching bands, floats, and cheerleaders all turned out for the 15th annual Turkey Bowl Parade sponsored by the Boca Jets Booster Club. Family and friends lined the route along Palmetto Park Road to the reviewing stand in front of City Hall. Channel 12 News was well represented. Our 11 o'clock newsman, John Matthews, was Grand Marshal. And along with Al Terzi, I was delighted to meet so many friends on this, my first Thanksgiving as a resident of South Florida. And what's a Thanksgiving Day parade without the jolly old man himself? On a beam of bright sunshine, Santa rode his sleigh into Boca Raton today. As you saw, Thanksgiving for most people is a happy holiday, a day of gathering with family and friends for football, parades, and the traditional feast. However, for some people, it can be a lonely experience. Now, this need not be, according to Dr. Dorothy Finkelor, a leading authority on retirement, a 77-year-old grandmother who says, maybe your attitude is to blame. The first thing we have to remember is that we brought ourselves down here. We weren't sent down here. When we decided to move to, an, to this good climate, we realized that we're going to give up some of the joys, such as holidays with the children. So that when the Thanksgiving holiday came around, and if we did not want to be alone, then we had to plan. What kind of a holiday did you want? and then make it happen. Dr. Finkelor offers further advice for retired residents of South County. She says, don't live in the past and don't rely on old memories and begin right now to plan for the next big holiday. Don't let the success or failure of Christmas or Hanukkah depend on whether the kids are coming down to visit. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. South County kept pace with the rest of the nation today in following the day after Thanksgiving tradition of getting started on Christmas shopping. The stores here in Boca Raton were jammed with holiday shoppers, although many of them admitted that money, or the lack of it, was very much on their minds this year and that current economic trends will have a definite effect on their shopping habits this season. Money is pretty tight this Christmas. Do you think you're going to be spending as much for Christmas presents as you have in the past? I don't think so. I really don't. Are you starting your Christmas shopping today? Why, certainly. With the recession and uh, inflation, do you think you'll be doing as much shopping this year as in the past? I doubt it very much. Okay, and uh, in buying your Christmas presents, uh, are you going to be charging more of them this year using the little plastic credit card? I think so, definitely. <laughs> Fourth quarter economy depends heavily on consumer holiday spending. Richard Simmons, president of the Boca Raton First Federal Savings and Loan Association, told me today that even though the national economy is in tough shape, he predicts a good Christmas buying season here in South County. People are basically optimistic, and they don't like to face those realities. And, and even the prospect of potential hard times and potential unemployment won't de deter their desire to have a nice family Christmas. And so they tend to make sacrifices uh, until it's really eminent. And, and I don't think uh, the Christmas buying down here will be affected adversely this year. A lot of people are saying this is going to turn into a plastic Christmas. Uh, Mr. Simmons, do you think perhaps that consumers are extending themselves too far via the credit card? Yes, to some extent. Uh, but. South Florida's economy really hasn't yet begun to feel the national recession, so I think that we'll have both immediate purchase as well as charging uh, for future payment. I, th I think uh, credit will continue to be extended. You know, people will continue to extend themselves on, on their credit uh, responsibilities. Simmons, who is also the new president of the Greater Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce, says that he feels that the buy now, pay later theme will also be reflected in a banner tourist season for Boca Raton this year. As for Christmas, one elderly woman summed it up when she said, of course I'm spending more money this year because everything I want to buy costs more. But then again, as she put it, Christmas only comes once a year. I'm Eleanor Shana White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The 51 Iranians attending Florida Atlantic University are maintaining such a low profile that many of the other members of the student body say they didn't even know they were there. School officials told Channel 12 News today that they have not isolated the Iranian students, nor have they offered them any special protection during the current crisis. There have been no problems so far on the Boca Raton campus. 
Immigration officials are due to arrive Wednesday morning to begin interviewing the foreign students. Meantime, professors at Florida Atlantic University are making another pitch for a pay hike. Today, Dr. Gerald Weiss, president of the union representing the faculty, fired off a letter to FAU President Glenwood Creech, challenging him to make a counteroffer to a faculty petition, which had asked for a 17.5% across-the-board salary increase. At this time, what we are requesting is a counteroffer from him. If he's not willing to accept a 17.5% salary increase for all faculty across the board out of quality improvement funds, what would he uh, consider uh, a fair uh, use of quality improvement funds for that purpose? Is there a possibility that the state legislature might appropriate across the board salary increases for the faculty next year? There is such a possibility and if that were to occur uh, then we would certainly reconsider our request that such salary increase money come out of the Special Quality Improvement Fund. Sources indicate that Dr. Creech was not in his office today and that he may not even be aware of the latest communique from the faculty members. Well, in other news, according to a committee report, the city of Boca Raton has outgrown its city hall. A recommendation has been made to construct a new three-story annex adjacent to the present office complex on West Palmetto Park Road. Final report should be due within about uh, two weeks, we hope. And then it's up to city council to set a target date? Right. They're the only ones who can. They, they, it's up to them to take action. The cost of construction to the new facility is estimated at $1.6 million. However, ultimately, the new building could save local taxpayers as much as $100,000 a year in funds now being spent shuffling city employees from departments scattered all over town. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The airport is back in the news here in South County once again. The State Board of Regents took on an unusual task when it jumped right into the middle of a dispute over whether Boca Raton's airstrip should be moved from its present site. The airport presently sits on a parcel of land which was given to the state by the federal government 20 years ago for use by Florida Atlantic University. However, the city of Boca Raton would like to assume title to that land which would clear the way for the airport to be moved. The issue has stirred up an intense controversy, one that isn't going to be decided, at least for the time being. The facilities committee concluded that uh, this issue is too complex to try to resolve in the meetings which were held yesterday and today, and they have appointed an ad hoc committee uh, comprised of 10 people to uh, study and bring recommendations to the Board of Regents at their January the 4th meeting. Is it not true that studies done by airport consultants and government officials have indicated that the airport should be controlled by the city. I believe that the study, Fenner St. John, has concluded that that's one of the alternatives, but I don't believe that they've concluded that it's the only alternative. Kelly, who has been appointed to chair of that committee, has already recommended that the board retain ownership of the airport. He told us today that if another site could be found for the airstrip, the university would like to use that land for expansion purposes. Now, briefly, in other news, Channel 12 tonight salutes the Greater Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce. It was announced today that the local chamber has been officially accepted for accreditation by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. This is indeed a prestigious honor, and we offer our congratulations. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. According to police reports, 63-year-old Clifford Smith of Brimfield, Illinois, entered the First Bank and Trust Company on North Federal Highway about 12.30 this afternoon, armed with a hunting knife and a small caliber gun. He took an undetermined amount of cash before fleeing into a wooded area off South Ocean Boulevard, where police picked up him and the money. In resisting arrest, the suspect suffered a minor dog bite. He was taken to Bethesda Hospital before being transported to Palm Beach County Jail, where he's been charged with armed robbery. FBI officials will join in the investigation since Smith allegedly is wanted in connection with another robbery in Cambridge, Illinois. Well, one of the most common New Year's resolutions is to take better care of your health. And the number one health problem here in the South County is heart disease, which takes thousands of lives each year. Just recently, a report in the Journal of the American Medical Association stressed the importance of exercise as a prescription for heart attack victims. Dr. Stephen Babick, a local heart specialist, feels that a specific exercise program will not only help in recovery, but he says it can also help prevent heart attacks, especially in high-risk individuals. It depends upon how you define exercise. We, uh, the old tendencies were to put people at rest, in bed rest, for six weeks. 
um, and I'm sure you've met many people that have been in hospitals for a month or two after their heart attack years ago. The tendency these days is to keep people in the hospital somewhere around 10 to 14 days. So uh, the day after a heart attack, we actually have people sitting up in a chair and uh, we have an organized program where we actually get people to start uh, walking after a few days, uh, two, three, four days after their heart attack. Uh, we think that it helps promote their getting back to uh, gainful employment, getting back to their family, and uh, reduce the stress of their heart attack. Uh, Dr. Babic feels that psychological stress definitely influences one's potential for developing heart attacks. However, there are other risk factors, and we'll be talking about those tomorrow night. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Boca Raton will lose its police chief February 15th. Charles McCutcheon has retired the post to become chief deputy for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. Well, I've been the chief for 10 years, and uh, I think when you've reached the top job that you, you do kind of look around and you wonder whether uh, you should try something else. And I did want to try something else. I've been in Boca with the police department for almost 24 years, so I'm not really a job jumper. Sheriff Richard Willey said he's known McCutcheon a long time and that McCutcheon was his first and only choice for the chief deputy slot, being vacated by Richard Kellogg, who's retiring. Well, the end of the holidays did not bring an end to the long gasoline lines here in the South County. Some motorists today said they are waiting as long as a half hour or more to fork over as much as $1.20 a gallon for unleaded fuel. What's the problem? Station owners blame a combination of tourist influx, population increase, and lower allocations. Some stations are putting purchase limits on their gas, while others are just shutting down early. Now, all of this is particularly rough on the type A personality. That's a typical profile of the person most likely to suffer a heart attack. Really, your young business executive, uh, the man that's always trying to get ahead, uh, perfectionist, uh, just uh, constantly on a go and ha really hasn't internalized his stress. He's not learned to externalize his stress. And I, I think that's a, a problem with our whole social environment here in the United States is that we, we do place our, ourselves under a great deal of stress, whereas other cultures have a tendency to diffuse that stress and uh, uh, help reduce their incidence of heart attacks. So no doubt about it, stress can kill you, but it's not the only factor contributing to heart disease. I think uh, one of the major risk factors, however, is family history. If your family has a strong family history of cardiovascular disease, then you most likely will develop cardiovascular disease also. Uh, people with diabetes, I think cigarette smoking is a major contributor to uh, heart disease, uh, obesity, um, and there probably are a few other factors which I haven't mentioned, but those are the major ones. And which poses the greater threat, cigarette smoking or obesity? Well, Dr. Babic says there's no question that cigarette smoking has contributed more to the increase in the number of heart attacks, especially among women. In our next report, the stress test and open heart surgery. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The home of the Enterprise will be undergoing some changes in the near future. The Pompano Beach City Commissioners and Goodyear Blimp officials have agreed to move the airship's mooring mast 300 feet west of its present location to comply with an FAA order designed to give tower controllers at the Pompano Air Park better visibility. Moving the 28-acre blimp base will cost $150,000. It'll also force the closing of a portion of Southeast Fifth Avenue between 10th Street and Copens Road. Now, the changes are expected to take place when Goodyear builds its 85-foot hangar, and that'll be sometime later this year. Meantime, the retired senior volunteer services program is once again back in business here in the South County area. It had to close its doors on January 1st when federal funding was cut off. But now, with monies from the United Way, the operation is recruiting volunteers once again. And we have many exciting volunteer positions that are available to our seniors, for instance, tutoring in our schools, in the court system, helping in the Medicare program, the Internal Revenue Service, which is coming up April the 15th, and uh, working in the hospitals, nursing homes, wherever there's a need for volunteers. And that need includes everyone from retired housewives to executives. So if you're over 60, if you have some time on your hands, your talents and services are badly needed. To call for an appointment, you can phone 395-8920. 
Well, finally, by proclamation of the mayor, this is photography month here in Boca Raton. To mark the occasion, several exhibits are currently on display. One is at the Gulfstream First Bank and Trust Office on Palmetto Park Road, where some of the area's best-known local photographers are showing their works. Included in the show are black and white, color, and hand-tinted prints, along with examples of some of the oldest photographic techniques. Another prize-winning collection of photographs entitled America As I See It is currently on display on the campus of Florida Atlantic University. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Deer Deerfield Beach Police picked up 30 Haitian refugees during the pre-dawn hours today as they were walking along a bridge on North Federal Highway near the Boca Raton-Deerfield border. According to police, the immigrants, who each paid five to six hundred dollars for passage, were dropped from two boats at the Hillsborough Canal. They've been turned over to U.S. immigration officials in Miami. The latest group brings to 86 the total number of Haitians who have entered the South County area illegally since the first of the year. Meantime, both suspense and speculation are mounting at the Boca Raton Police Department over who will be named to succeed Chief Charles McCutcheon, who retires the post on February 15th to become Chief Deputy of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. According to McCutcheon, all four captains in his department are qualified to occupy the big black leather chair. However, one has already ruled himself out of contention. 59-year-old Captain William Lestrange told me he'll retire soon. He says he doesn't want to be considered for the job. So that narrows the field down to three men, one of whom will be picked by city manager Jack Morehouse to be named interim police chief in the next 10 days. The youngest is Captain Peter Petraco, a 38-year-old former New Yorker who holds a master's degree in criminal justice from Nova University. Petraco has been on the force for 15 years. He's married and the father of two children. Another ex-New Yorker with 17 years on the force is Frank McGuire, who started as a patrolman, worked his way up through the ranks to captain in charge of administration. McGuire is a bachelor and a graduate of Northwestern University. Unlike McGuire and Petraco, who were non-committal about their desires to be named to the post, Captain Wayne Wright laid it on the line, admitting candidly that becoming police chief has been his longtime goal. Wright, who has headed up the Detective Bureau for the past eight years, was also quick to point out that he and Chief McCutcheon share similar backgrounds. The city manager has the authority to name a permanent police chief. Jack Morehouse, who will retire in June, says he feels that the final choice should be made by the new city manager. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Lee Iacocca, head of the Chrysler Corporation, has arrived in South Florida to be with his wife, Mary, who is listed in critical condition in the Coronary Intensive Care Unit here at the Boca Raton Community Hospital. The 55-year-old Mrs. Iacocca, who has a history of heart trouble, suffered a coronary attack on Wednesday while vacationing at the family's winter home at the Sable Point Apartments on South Ocean Boulevard. Her illness forced the cancellation of a meeting in New York City yesterday, at which time Iacocca was expected to expand on the financially ailing automaker's nationwide refund program. It's been learned that 10 of Chrysler's top officials will fly into South Florida over the weekend to attend a closed-door meeting with Iacocca on Monday. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting for Channel 12 News from the South County. U.S. immigration officials have 56 Haitians in custody tonight, picked up in two separate incidents in North Broward and South Palm Beach County within the past 24 hours. A total of 31 men, 13 females, and two infants were in a group dropped off along the seawall on the intracoastal at Hillsborough Beach early last evening. A security guard spotted several of the refugees strolling leisurely along A1A about 6.30 p.m. Half dozen of them had crossed the Deerfield Beach line before being picked up by authorities there. According to reports, the Haitians, who paid from $300 to $1,000 for passage, have been turned over to the West Palm Beach Border Patrol for processing. Meantime, Boca Raton police received a call this morning from construction workers who spotted a 21-foot speedboat beach near 40th Street. Within minutes, they had rounded up another 10 Haitians who left a few pieces of clothing, some water and gasoline scattered on the beach. Well, approximately 9 a.m., uh, we received a call of some Haitians uh, on the beach some of them walking westbound on 40th Street. Uh, we came over to the area and we found the boat on the beach. We picked up uh, six female Haitians and uh, four male Haitians. They're now at the Boca Police Department waiting on the uh, Border Patrol or Immigration Authorities to come down. We believe that's all that uh, were in the boat at the time. 
The boat which the Haitians powered themselves carried a Freeport registration and is believed to be stolen. The refugees were taken to the Boca Raton police station before being transported by bus by immigration officials to Miami. Briefly, in other news, city manager Jack Morehouse says he will appoint one of the city's four police captains to become acting police chief to replace Charles McCutcheon when his retirement becomes effective February 1st. McCutcheon quit the post to become chief deputy of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. In a speech before a special session of the Electronics Industries Association meeting at the Boca Raton Hotel, Senator Richard Luger, Republican from Indiana today, called for President Carter to take military action against the Soviet Union in response to the invasion of Afghanistan. The problem is our inability in the short run uh, to do very much about it. This is why the President's moves, in my judgment, have to be military moves. That is, the rearmament of this country, and specifically arms to Pakistan, through Pakistan to the Afghan rebels. Meantime, one of the major issues facing the electronics organization is the U.S. embargo on high technology exports to the Soviet Union. According to industry's president, Pete McCloskey, the move will be pointless unless other Western countries cooperate. The executives of the industry have taken the position that the we support the president's moratorium on sales to the Soviet Union with the understanding in and on the condition that the administration use its utmost powers to uh, get the cooperation of the U.S. allies and trading partners in their sales to the Soviet Union. At the same time, Congressman Jim Jones from Oklahoma said he feels that events on the international scene will have a positive effect on our domestic economy. I fully expect Congress to pass a tax bill this year that will provide capital recovery for capital investments that will provide some relief from Social Security tax increases uh, that will be uh, passed by the Congress and I think will be signed by the President. Other encouraging economic news came today from Richard Everett, Vice President of Chase Manhattan Bank, who said that he predicts that the prime lending rate could drop to below 10 percent by the end of 1980. Everett also gave me his personal views on the recession. Well, if it started already, and I said there's some evidence it's not fully persuasive, but if it started, it should be over by sometime in the late summer, I would guess. There are some parts of the economy that are still pretty strong and likely to stay strong, and that's some offset to the weakness that you see elsewhere, especially in auto sales and uh, construction and new housing. Everett added a word of caution to small investors who are putting their money in the gold market. As he put it, unless you have a lot of money, it's a risky business. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The body of 47-year-old Mary Rashkin was pulled from a canal at Southeast 9th Avenue in Pompano Beach about noontime today. According to police reports, there were no indications of foul play. The victim was last seen by her husband about 1 o'clock this morning. Meantime, 18-year-old Larry Smith was killed in a construction accident at the gates of Hillsborough and Deerfield Beach about noon today. Smith was hit on the head by a backhoe. He was dead on arrival at North Brower General Hospital. Well, tonight at 7 o'clock, the Greater Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce is going to sponsor a special seminar on shoplifting, Florida's number one dollar loss crime, and one that affects each and every consumer, since according to the Florida Retail Federation, we all pay over 200 extra dollars each year in higher prices to cover the store's loss of merchandise. Joan Gommel, who heads the Chamber's Retail Committee, explains some things small shopkeepers can do to deter shoplifting. In our store, we always greet the customer when they come in so that they know we're aware of them being in the shop. Our store is set up so that we can watch them and be with them constantly and help them make their selections. Can you spot a shoplifter? Uh, not readily, but they act a little nervous and uh, they, you just are aware that they're there. <laughs> The figures are staggering. This year, retail thefts in Florida are expected to top $300 million. And according to Sergeant Mike Knoll of the Boca Raton Police, the local loss figures are conservative. A lot more serious than statistics would have us believe. Um, we make uh, roughly an arrest on the average of about one a day for shoplifting throughout our city, uh, which doesn't seem like that much. But you consider how many cases of shoplifting go unreported or even undetected. Uh, it adds up to quite a few uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. What sort of methods do shoplifters use? 
Well, they've used uh, just about everything uh, from uh, simply palming the item, picking it up off the counter and keeping it concealed in their hand. We've had instances of people trying to steal jewelry by putting it in their mouth and swallowing it, all the way to the other uh, extreme of women taking large objects such as uh, uh, typewriters and, and large canned hams and lifting up their dress and, and holding it between their knees and walking out of the store rather precariously. So uh, it's limited only by their ingenuity and imagination. It should be pointed out that shoplifting is not a spur-of-the-moment kid's crime. In fact, 65% of all shoplifters caught have the money to pay for the merchandise they're stealing. Is it a disease? It, perhaps. Um, uh, people talk, psychologists talk about uh, TV and the pressures of our society and the need to have and to get. And there was great pressure, psychological and emotional, to get something for nothing, to get ahead. And to teach these individuals that it is a crime and there are severe punishments hopefully will uh, keep them out of uh, as stores as shoplifters. So to put it simply, shoplifting is a serious crime. If convicted, shoplifters could face several thousand dollars in fines and up to five years in prison. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The home of the Enterprise will be undergoing some changes in the near future. The Pompano Beach City Commissioners and Goodyear Blimp officials have agreed to move the airship's mooring mast 300 feet west of its present location to comply with an FAA order designed to give tower controllers at the Pompano Air Park better visibility. Moving the 28-acre blimp base will cost $150,000. It'll also force the closing of a portion of Southeast Fifth Avenue between 10th Street and Copens Road. Now, the changes are expected to take place when Goodyear builds its 85-foot hangar, and that'll be sometime later this year. Meantime, the Retired Senior Volunteer Services Program is once again back in business here in the South County area. It had to close its doors on January 1st when federal funding was cut off. Now, with monies from the United Way, the operation is recruiting volunteers once again. And we have many exciting volunteer positions that are available to our seniors. For instance, tutoring in our schools, in the court system, helping in the Medicare program, the Internal Revenue Service, which is coming up April the 15th, and uh, working in the hospitals, nursing homes, wherever there's a need for volunteers. And that need includes everyone from retired housewives to executives. So if you're over 60, if you have some time on your hands, your talents and services are badly needed. To call for an appointment, you can phone 395-8920. Well, finally, by proclamation of the mayor, this is Photography Month here in Boca Raton. To mark the occasion, several exhibits are currently on display. One is at the Gulfstream First Bank and Trust Office on Palmetto Park Road, where some of the area's best-known local photographers are showing their works. Included in the show are black and white, color, and hand-tinted prints, along with examples of some of the oldest photographic techniques. Another prize-winning collection of photographs entitled America As I See It is currently on display on the campus of Florida Atlantic University. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. You can't separate politics from the Olympics, according to marathon swimmer Diana Nyad. The woman who became the first person to swim from Bimini to Florida last spring told Channel 12 News today that she supports President Carter's proposal to boycott the summer games in Moscow. I understand as well as they all do, because I put in all those years, too, even though I'm not going. Uh, but I must say that if I were an athlete, I, I'd even stick with it. I don't think we should have been in Berlin in 36. And as much work as they put in, especially the track stars and the swimmers who have nothing else, they have no pro-life pro coming afterwards. Uh, it's such a shame, but I don't think they should be there. I mean, it's, it's unconscionable what's happening in the Middle East today and in Iran. And uh, uh, they, uh, the only... Uh, spokes word we can give is not to go to Moscow. Ms. Nyad said her next goal will be to swim 100 miles straight in open sea. She plans to make that attempt sometime next summer in Europe. Meantime, controversy again surrounds the Boca Raton Airport. Local citizens groups are remaining firm in their opposition to Friday's Florida Board of Regents proposal, asking that a joint authority be organized to manage the airport. Opponents claim that since the airport is within city limits, it should be city controlled. Well, thousands of Delray Beach residents will probably have to send in another check for their utility bills and license renewals and property taxes. The city will be notifying them soon if their checks were among $73,000 worth stolen from a vault in the offices of the Finance Department early Friday. 
In addition, some $2,000 in cash was taken. Delray police say they have no suspects, although an intensive investigation is continuing, which includes questioning and fingerprinting of some 21 city employees. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Walter Heller brought some encouraging economic news during a visit to South County today. The former economic advisor to Presidents Kennedy and Johnson said even though we're on the threshold of a recession, he expects it to be a moderate one and of short duration. He also looks for mortgage interest rates to come down soon. I have no doubt that uh, mortgage interest rates are now beginning to crest. They'll hang up there for a while then I would expect some very mild easing. And that's going to help the cost of living because the cost of living index exaggerates both the upturn and the downturn. And the other thing is, interestingly enough, oil prices aren't going to rise as fast in 1980 as they did in 1979. When they hit the consumer level, they will rise only about half as fast this year as last year. And that's going to help us some. I think we'll get out of the double digits on inflation generally by mid-year. Heller was in town today to address a convention of pipeline contractors meeting at the Boca Raton Hotel. Meanwhile, Hugo Scheltema, ambassador of the Netherlands to the United Nations, told a news conference today he's not sure yet whether his country will send athletes to the Olympics if they're held in Moscow this summer. I think it's a matter of debate. It's also a matter of debate within the government. Um, as I say, it's not a government decision, but surely the government is in a position to pronounce itself on the desirability to participate or not. Mr. Ambassador, would the Netherlands support a boycott of trade with Iran? I don't know yet. Uh, you will have read in the newspapers that um, boycott of trade with Iran is a very difficult, very difficult proposition for a good many countries, including countries in Western Europe. And while we all agree I should say even more than 100% on the desirability that something should be done, or let me put it this way, that problem be solved. And while we all agree on the condemnation of the actions by the terrorists in Tehran, another question is whether and to what extent we agree on certain measures proposed by the United States. Sheldon has said further he doesn't feel the power of the UN as a peacekeeping force in the world has lost its effectiveness in spite of recent Soviet Union vetoes on U.S. proposals. In other news, there are still no suspects in Friday's double murder at the Meadows Retirement Community in Deerfield Beach. According to police, Yezu Sanzu of Coral City was arrested outside this house at 1702 Southwest 19th Avenue carrying a concealed weapon. He was released on $1,000 bond. It was also Sanchez who identified the victims as 38-year-old Robert Sergener and 24-year-old Jean Capella. Police indicate the murders may have been drug-related since $50,000 worth of cocaine and two small weapons were found inside the house. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The number one news story here in the South County is the shortage of gasoline. We took our Channel 12 cameras to service stations throughout Boca Raton today where, for some unexplained reason, the crunch is hitting hardest. We found signs like this popping up all over town. By the time this report is aired, some stations will have pumped all of the gas allocated for the month of January. We've got about 2,000 gallons left. We're going to sell it this afternoon and that'll be it for the month. The situation isn't expected to improve in February, and Pearson is only one of several station owners who have decided to shut down the pumps three days a week. There isn't enough gas to stay open but four days a week. We're operating a four-day-a-week schedule. We're closed Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're open eight hours a day, and we're still selling our allocation, and we could still use more. We do not mean to imply that there is no gas in town. There are stations pumping gas. This is one of them up here about a half block. And this is the line, maybe 20 or 30 cars. The stations that are pumping gasoline are restricting sales. And, well, you could wait an hour or more. And the motorists are getting angry, right? I would definitely agree with that. You know, I think it's ridiculous that you have to wait in line for gas. When I, I personally feel there's a lot of gas out there. They're just not selling it. They're selling it whenever they want to. Up north, it's easier to get gas than it is down here. There has to be a solution. Now we can offer no solutions to the problem and no answers to the questions of why the gas squeeze is hitting the South County area so hard. 
All we can give you is some advice. If you need gasoline, you better try to fill up Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday early in the day. In other news, this 52-year-old Palmetto Park Bridge, which is a major access to Boca Raton's beachfront, may close for repairs soon. County commissioners today discussed plans to authorize the release of up to $100,000 for the proposed project. Repairs could begin by the end of February. I'm Eleanor Shana White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. You know, just watching the evening news reminds all of us of the turmoil in the world today. Most Americans agree it takes a keen sense of humor just to survive. Well, that kind of sense of humor has allowed Art Buckwall to survive all these years. The popular columnist was in town today, and he shared with me his solution to a myriad of problems. First off, I asked him how he would solve the controversy currently raging over the Summer Olympics in Moscow. I suggested that we send it to them piecemeal. If they get out of Afghanistan, we'd give them our track and field team. And then if they got out of Angola, we'd let them have the weightlifters and the water polo team. And then if they got out of the Indian Ocean, we'd let them have the basketball team. What did the Iowa primaries really mean? It was a media show, and everybody decided based on Iowa that the election is over. There's no sense going on because George Bush and Carter were going to be the candidates. And your personal presidential candidate prediction? Well, I'm going to predict Bush and Baker, and if I'm wrong, I want you to erase this tape. You know, one of the biggest problems here in South Florida today is a shortage of gasoline, and a lot of people get angry when they realize that our congressmen are paying 50, 60 cents a gallon and uh, buying all the gasoline they want up in Washington. Yeah, well, if that didn't make them angry, something else would. So that's as good as anything. But I, I must admit that I've been traveling all over the country in the last few weeks, and Florida is the only place I've seen gas lines. So something's going on here, and you better find out what it is. Maybe the stuff isn't getting to you. Maybe it's being stopped in Georgia. Buckwald, whose syndicated column appears in over 500 newspapers across the country, told me his biggest problem is his fan mail. 50% of his readers write wanting him to do their term papers. The other 50% they want his job. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Just ripped a page from my personal notebook. As a fairly new resident to South Florida, recently transplanted from my hometown just two months ago, you might understand if I feel just a little homesick tonight. You see, I was born and raised in Titletown, USA, otherwise known as Pittsburgh, PA. And when I realized that my Steelers are going after their fourth Super Bowl win, well, it made me go into my files and dig out an interview I did last fall with running back Franco Harris. At that time, Franco offered some insight into what has become a rather controversial topic lately, the violence and the injuries in pro football. Oh, he also proved to be rather prophetic in his thoughts on Super Bowl XIV. But it is part of the game uh, where uh, you do get injured and you do have to play hurt. I mean, probably, like I'd say, probably every Sunday, about every player on every team goes out there and plays hurt. Something is ailing that guy. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you learn uh, how to play hurt, and it's very important in the pros to be able to do that. Uh, I mean, like it might look like the guys are all right out there, they're doing their job and all this and all that, but the fans just don't realize that a lot of those players have injuries out there. Yeah, how do you feel about number four? Do you think the team is really going to be up to really go for number four? I think we have a strong nucleus of guys uh, who are real winners. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably uh, proven that through the last seven years. You know, you know, we've had our ups and downs. But through it all, I would say that uh, we've probably come out on top more than any other team through the last few years. And that's because we have a lot of winners on our team. and. Uh, Guys who go out there and they play hard and uh, they, they set goals and they want to set records. And we set a record that we want to be the first team to win three Super Bowls. Now we want to be the first team to win four Super Bowls. So. And you can bet the Steelers will be the first team to win four Super Bowls. Only question is by how much? How does 35 to 10 sound? I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from South County Bureau in Boca Raton. But for this one night, my heart's in Pittsburgh. Remember the good old days when you got a full tank of gas with a rental car? Well, these days you're lucky if you find one with a quarter tank. Hey, the cars are dropped off usually with a quarter or half a tank of gas, and that's the way they go back out. The 
because of the situation with the gas, we're unable to fill them back up for each rental like we used to do. Tony, you say you've had some phone calls from people wanting to rent a car just because they can't buy gasoline for their own automobiles. Oh, yes. Uh, on the weekends, uh, the stations are closed and what have you, so they call up and say, can I get a full tank of gas with your rental car so I can leave my car there and use yours over the weekend? And unfortunately, we weren't able to help them in that situation. You've noticed the people's driving habits are changing? Oh, definitely. Uh, because of the situation with the gas, they're all lined up an hour or two at a time just trying to get gas, so that takes them away from every other business in town. So. The current gas crunch is also having a devastating effect on the car wash business. In the last three days, we've noticed our business has dropped way off, at least 40 percent. And for the season, it's at least 15 percent off. People are waiting in line for gas. They're disgusted. They wait an hour, an hour and a half for gas. When they get through, they go home. They don't want to go anywhere else. And a lot of people are just not driving their cars. In other words, if they have to go somewhere, essentially, they'll, they'll drive the car. Otherwise, they won't drive the car. You notice that there's less traffic on the main roads here? This morning, I couldn't believe it. The first two hours on a Federal looked like it was bare, like summertime. To put it simply, if you can't buy gas, you can't drive your car. If you can't drive your car, well, the entire local economy begins to feel the pinch. And that's exactly what's happening here in the South County. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting in the middle of the day, the height of the season, on North Federal Highway in Boca Raton for Channel 12 News. Motorists aren't the only ones having trouble getting gasoline here in the South County. The Boca Raton Airport has run out of octane 100 fuel, and pilots have been warned not to land unless they have enough fuel to get out again. The next shipment is not due until April, and according to an airport spokesman, chances are even then allocations will be cut. Well, thousands of motorists who are already grumbling about the high cost and shortage of gasoline may have to take a long detour to the beach before long. Approximately 12,000 cars will be rerouted each day while repair work is being done to the 52-year-old Palmetto Park Bridge. Earlier this week, county commissioners agreed to spend $100,000 to fix up the span. Construction work should take about a month. The Pompano Fashion Square has been sold to Pan American Properties for $39 million. The California investment firm purchased the mall from Leonard Farber, a Fort Lauderdale developer who built it in the late 60s. At that time, the mall, which houses over 100 stores, was considered the largest indoor shopping center in the country. And finally, the story of Juan Soltes of Del Rey. Like many tomato farmers, he can't market his bumper crop this year. But instead of letting the produce just rot on the ground, he invited senior citizens to his farm today. For 10 cents a pound, he told them they could take home all they could carry. We cannot sell them to the market. I'm not getting enough money for my uh, expenses. And rather than seeing them go into waste, I'd rather for the cities, senior citizen have some of them. Soltes said the reason for his surplus is the Mexican produce being dumped in the state. It's trying to put us out of business. And 75% of the tomatoes in the store right now are Mexicans. Another reason given for the bountiful crop is the ideal tomato growing weather this year. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. If you're in the mood for some genuine, light-hearted fun, run, don't walk to the Royal Palm Dinner Theater, where director Jan McCart has done it again. The smash Broadway comedy hit Any Wednesday opened last night to an enthusiastic audience treated to two hours of sheer entertainment. The cast is solid, each of the four members turning in superb performances. Bobby Allen Kostrin is brilliant as the tax-deductible mistress of a married business tycoon played to the hilt by veteran actor Warren Brown. While Melissa Hart just about steals the show as his straight-laced, warm-hearted wife. And William Forsyth, whose face is familiar to television viewers, is perfectly cast as the handsome young out-of-town bachelor. All in all, it's good theater. Any Wednesday, we'll be playing at the Royal Palm Dinner Theater from now through February 17th. Well, briefly, in other news, when a person turns over 50, well, usually they don't want too much fanfare. However, if you're a hotel and you've chalked up more than half a century, well, that's a different story. One of the most famous landmarks in the South County, the Boca Raton Hotel and Club, will celebrate its 54th birthday this Sunday with a champagne brunch. Tickets for the affair are available through the Boca Raton Historical Society. All proceeds will be used for a museum, which will be housed in the old city hall on North Federal Highway. Finally, this is National Children's Dental Health Month, and to mark the occasion, a dental health fair is being held this weekend at the Boca Raton Mall.
The fair itself is sponsored by the South Palm Beach County Dental Association and it's going to have things for all ages. It's going to basically be combined with an oral hygiene area where we'll be giving oral hygiene instructions to anyone who comes by. The fair is designed to make the public more aware of good dental health and it will offer everything from free toothbrushes to free oral cancer tests. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Well, consumers here in the South County area are rushing out to buy silver, silver household items and film in anticipation of a major price increase. In our sampling of local merchants, we learned that silver stock is low as a result of the rush on the market, and many suppliers have put a freeze on new orders until silver prices stabilize. When the freeze is lifted, it's expected that the price on sterling flatware and service pieces will jump on an average of 20 to 25 percent. When you shutterbugs are going to be saying, wow, when you hear about the increases in the price of film expected within the next week or so. Well, uh, right now we think it's uh, 15, 20, and 25 percent depending upon the size of the film. The size of the film dictates this uh, because the larger it is, the more silver it has in its basis. We understand that uh, some specialty items are going to go up by as much as 50 to 60 percent. Right. Uh, specialty items, industrial products, uh, large sheet film for these uh, copying cameras uh, is going to go up quite a bit, about 60 percent. News of the price increase has produced any panic buying, Charlie? Well, we have had uh, professional accounts come in and uh, buy 60, 80, 100 rolls at a time. We've had amateur people come in and they'll buy 12, 14, 20 at a time. Uh, the film will keep. It's, uh, it's dated uh, about a year in advance. If it's kept refrigerated, you can use it two and three years after that date. Charlie tells me if you refrigerate your film at 55 degrees, you can store it almost indefinitely. Oh, by the way, it's not just the price of film that's going up, but the price of processing will increase in the near future due to price hikes and chemicals and paper. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. It's a new week, a new month, but still the same old story here in the South County. The acute shortage of gasoline continues. We took a random sampling of service stations in Boca Raton today and discovered that at least half have not yet received their February allocation. Even those who have are forced to restrict sales and are pumping only a few hours a day, trying to stretch the limited fuel allotment for the month. Well, the allocations are real low right now. It's like a lot of the February allotment's been cut back. Tourist season's really booming right now, and with the public and the growth of the town, it's just getting harder and harder to handle all the people. If the stations would open up normal operating hours, we would all be out of gasoline probably in about four or five days. Uh, we have to presently close at about 11 o'clock in the morning and reopen at 2 to give everybody a chance to get some gas because there's more traffic on the road due to tourists and people are starting to panic buying. And uh, people who don't need gas, uh, let's say with a half a tank or more, they just wait in line because they're afraid of what tomorrow will bring. The consensus is tomorrow will bring more of the same. Long lines, as long as two miles in some cases, with no relief in sight for the next several months. Now, you might ask why the situation is so critical here in the South County, while it doesn't seem to be quite as tight elsewhere. The population has really uh, more than doubled here in the past few years in traffic, and there's been nothing done by the Department of Energy or the state of Florida to increase our allocation. Vanelli says he feels especially sorry for tourists who are finding it next to impossible to get service or repairs to their cars. Many stations have had to lay off mechanics and attendants alike. If you're unfortunate enough to need a power fix or a radiator hose repaired after four in the afternoon or on weekends, well, chances are you're just out of luck. In fact, that's what it takes. Luck, a lot of fortitude, and an abundance of patience to find gasoline here in the South County. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. City Manager Jack Morehouse today named Captain Wayne Wright Acting Police Chief of Boca Raton. Wright will replace Charles McCutcheon, who retires the post February 15th, to become Chief Deputy of the Palm Beach Sheriff's Department. A 16-year veteran of the Boca Raton Force, Wright has headed up the Detectives Bureau for the past eight years. We talked with the new chief this afternoon, asked him what his number one priority will be in taking over as interim head of the department. My number one priority will be uh 
to be appointed the permanent chief of police. Uh, there are some interesting challenges that we'll have in the 80s. The, the population growth in the community, the increased crime problems, the increased uh, traffic problems that we'll be having. Uh, I look for the 80s to be a very challenging period in uh, law enforcement within a community. Now that you've been named uh, police chief, that leaves an opening of the head of the uh, Detective Bureau. Who is going to make that appointment and when? Well, I intend to talk to the uh, current chief of police, uh, Charlie McCutcheon, about that, and uh, we'll arrive at some decision. We have a fine, fine team of policemen there. Wright will serve as acting police chief until the new city manager takes over June 1st. He could at that time exercise his authority to make the appointment a permanent one. Meantime, members of the city manager's recruitment committee have narrowed their search down to six candidates to replace Jack Morehouse. The six come from as many different states as far north as New York and Pennsylvania. Over the past four months, the committee has screened over 100 applicants for the job. They expect to narrow the field even further before submitting the names to city council by February 15th. Jack Morehouse retires June 1st. And finally, plans for the new College of Engineering were unveiled this afternoon at Florida Atlantic University. The proposed $4.4 million two-story facility will bring together the departments of electrical, mechanical, and ocean engineering. It's been designed to incorporate energy conservation measures. Uh, in addition to the building, there is also exterior lab yards that will be used for testing. Uh, within the lab yards, we have exterior test tanks, and we also have setups for solar energy experiments as well. Construction on this site, centrally located on the FAU campus, will begin as soon as the state legislature approves funding. The job should take about 14 months to complete. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Boca Raton police tonight are looking for a lone white male wanted in connection with an armed robbery at the First Marine Bank on North Federal Highway about 1.30 this afternoon. According to reports, the suspect driving a small foreign car demanded money from a drive-in teller threatening that he had a weapon. The teller gave him an undetermined amount of cash and he fled the scene. Meantime, the old timers are saying that uh, things are a little different here in the South County than they have been in previous winters. Traffic isn't as congested, not as many long lines at popular restaurants, and vacancy signs are more common at some of the local hotels and motels. What's the problem? Well, maybe the fact that Old Man Winter was a little late arriving up north is one factor, but most people think the real reason why tourism is off is the high price and shortage of gasoline, which is hurting local merchants. Some report business off from 25 to 50 percent. Well, I'd say it's, uh, it's probably dropped off about 25 percent for the season so far, and a uh, good percentage of the business of my local customers that are a few miles away from here can't afford to get the gas or can't stand waiting in line to get gas to come on over and get something to eat. I'd say for the month of January, the uh, tourists, you know, have not been here like they have in the past, and I would think that the gas situation has something to do with it. And uh, I'd say it's down 40, 50 percent compared to last year. Maybe one New York tourist summed it all up when he told me from a parked car in a gasoline line, quote, I didn't come down here to be stuck like this. Just give me enough gasoline to get me to the airport so I can catch the next plane back home. Since this is the height of the season, local merchants say they doubt they can recover the losses they've already sustained. Many are beginning to show concern over tourism and whether it'll be down in the spring and summer months as well. In related news, although the first shots haven't been fired, it appears a gasoline price posting regulatory war is brewing. The city commission in Deerfield Beach last night adopted an ordinance requiring gas stations to post prices which would be visible to motorists from the street. Uh, we've heard about this about a month ago, so we did post the prices before the uh, put it in effect. I would say that there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Like uh, thus, one of the cons would be that uh, it attracts a lot more people, causes our line to be longer because our prices are a little bit lower. That was one of our worst things that happened here. A lot of the places that are making 15 and 16 cents to a gallon that can hurt them because their prices are higher. Deerfield Beach officials took the action last night in spite of pending litigation in Hollywood, Florida, where the Allied Gasoline Retailers Association has filed suit against the city for passing similar price posting requirements. A tentative public hearing on the Deerfield Beach ordinance is set for March 4th. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. 
We have encouraging news for the thousands of visually handicapped people living here in the South County. These are people who can't even read the evening newspaper or watch this television newscast because of an acute eyesight deficiency. According to Dr. Russell Ray, a low vision therapist, today's technology has made it possible for these people to resume near normal lives. And we have the availability to get and to make the lenses that are specially designed for the individual for them to be able to move around, to watch television, to read, to sit in a car and be able to read the road signs where they weren't able to do that before. Can you describe the lens, doctor? Yes. Um, they're compound lenses made of many different pieces of glass that are ground together in order to obtain the magnification that you need. It may be quite uh, efficient, however, aesthetically, it uh, presents some well, problems. What the patient has to decide is what he wants to do. Does he want to be able to see well enough that he can see a road sign, that he could see his grandson sitting across the room playing with a toy? If he wants to, then it's just a factor that you've just got to get used to it. In addition to the scaled-down microscopes and telescopes, Dr. Ray sometimes suggests a closed-circuit television set which can be installed in the home, allowing a person to use the TV to read print on a screen which can be magnified 22 times. Well, briefly in other news, a 44-foot yacht confiscated last July in Boca Raton's biggest drug bust will be auctioned off this Saturday at the Marlins Bike Marina in Delray Beach. The city seized the Nerissa in a bust which netted five tons of marijuana. Officials hope the high bid this weekend will be close to $200,000, which was the 1975 book value on the yacht. Now, what are they going to do with the money? Well, the police would like to use the proceeds to buy another police boat for marine patrols. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The president of the Association of Trial Lawyers of America was in Boca Raton today where he pulled no punches in attacking the FBI. Michael Koskoff told me he's distressed over the agency's undercover action in the ABSCAM investigation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, enough crime in this country without the FBI stimulating more crime. And, and you have to worry about uh, using friends to trap people. And uh, these were traps that were set and uh, I think the FBI could use its talents doing other things. Now, of course, the results may show differently, but I also feel that uh, using the FBI for that purpose is, is, is an unhealthy one, an unhappy one. Um, to offer people bribes, and then, as William Sapphire says, to offer people bribes, and if they don't take it, they go home, and if they do take it, they're immediately tried and convicted on television isn't really the way Americans conduct things. And you feel there definitely is a legal question of entrapment? I think there is. On another subject, Koskov said he strongly favors lawyers advertising, saying this is the only way to bring down the high cost of legal services. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The list of hopefuls to replace city manager Jack Morehouse, who retires June 1st, has now been narrowed to three. Out of 175 applicants, the finalists are Glenn Blaisdell of Mecklenburg, North Carolina, 34-year-old Marshall Bond of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, and 37-year-old Jim Zuwald of Buford County, South Carolina. These three names will be submitted to city council before February 15th. Well, in other news, marathon runner Bill Rogers today began training for the 1980 Olympics at Boca West. Rogers told a news conference he's opposed to the probability of a U.S. boycott of the summer games in Moscow. We are still trading uh, merchandise and everything with the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc countries, so if we want to make a point, I think there's other ways to do it, you know. How would you feel about going to Moscow under the current situation? Uh, well, right now, I don't think we're going to go. So it's kind of like, you know, I feel very confused. Uh, but I couldn't believe it was happening, you know. It, it's because it's like uh, something that you believed in all your life suddenly was just crushed. Rogers, who has won the Boston Marathon twice and the New York Marathon three times, said he's disappointed at the current international situation because at age 33, he knows this will be his last chance to go to the Olympics. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The population here in the South County has more than doubled in the past decade, proof that thousands of Americans migrate each year in search of a place in the sun. Fact is, we've become a nation of sun worshippers. 
Many people think a suntan makes them look more attractive, even more successful, while others believe soaking up the sun makes them healthy, when in reality, just the opposite is true. Too much sun is harmful. We're all familiar with the short-term ill effects of overexposure, the painful blisters, fever, and other miseries of sunburn. But the long-term effects are far more serious. The sun is the major cause of the most common form of cancer in the United States. In fact, almost all of the 300,000 new cases of skin cancer which will be diagnosed this year will be sun-related, which explains why the disease has reached near epidemic proportions here in Boca Raton. People that have uh, fair skin and light eyes and light hair are the people that are more sensitive and more susceptible to the sun damage. Uh, but the one single most important cause is the sun. While studies indicate the incidence of skin cancer is more common among fair-skinned people of Irish or Scotch descent, no one living in this subtropical climate is immune. And further, doctors warn that sun damage is accumulative, explaining why most skin cancers appear after the fifth decade of life. For the people that are, um, that are older and get the same amount of sun exposure as somebody who's younger will tend to have more sun damage uh, skin or, or more changes developed during that period of time. What are some of the changes to look for? Well, fortunately, skin cancer has visible early warnings. A sore that doesn't heal. Change in the size or color of a mole or wart. The development of any unusual pigmented area, no matter how slight. Only a physician can determine the nature of an abnormal skin growth, whether it's benign, precancerous, or malignant. I think the, the most important thing is to seek medical advice when you see something that's unusual, different, has just grown, that type of thing. The usual traditional warning signals of a uh, rapidly enlarging tumor or something that's bled or uh, uh, obviously changed color, uh, those are all good things to watch for, but that's often after it's been around for a while. Dr. Mara feels it's important to make the diagnosis with the biopsy to determine which kind of skin cancer exists. In tomorrow night's report, we're going to discuss the various types of skin cancer and the different methods of treatment available today. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Political activity is dominating news from the South County tonight. Fair weather contributed to a brisk turnout in Deerfield Beach, where voters are going to the polls to decide who will occupy four commission seats. District 2 is capturing most interest, where two incumbents, Robert Dugdahl and Sylvia Portier, are fighting for one seat. In other races, 44-year-old businessman Frank Troina is running against restaurant owner Arthur D'Amato, while incumbent Ben Bo